Ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some help. Help. Oh. Okay, that was me earlier today at the Thunder Pop, <laughs> at the Thunder Pop Dome trying to do, I got inspired, I was watching uh, some clips from Black Widow, which by the way came out uh, most places yesterday, last night, it's out this weekend, so huge, probably the biggest week ever, well the biggest week for Marvel since the release of Endgame was this week, because you had the much anticipated return to the cinema for the MCU and you had a new Loki episode. So, Oh yeah. Which is the next to last episode. So a big, big weekend and big week. And we'll talk about that, but I was trying to do the black widow lunge because I saw all these photos online of Scarlett, <laughs> uh, of Scarlett Johansson's black widow. And she's always in this in every, every other, every other picture on Google, when you search engine, Black Widow, it's her doing one of these lunge landings. I guess you'd call it a lunge landing. Yeah. And she's infamous and famous for the lunge landing. And over the years, there were all these pictures. You could do a, a lunge landing uh, montage for Black Widow. <laughs> and so I got inspired to decide I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do, my, I'm trying to do the Black Widow lunge. Um, there's a side by side of, of, there's a big difference between her and me trying to do the same move. It's not, you look like you're doing superhero yoga. Yeah, it's a little different with me. Like the, <laughs> I'll tell you, she makes that lean in. She's got that lean in down a little bit better than me. So anyway, there's there was me trying to do the black widow. I call it the black widow lunge, or it's a lunge, <laughs> a lunge landing. I'm gonna work on it. There could be a black widow yoga workout though, with all the drops and landings she does, with all the stretching and kicking, and that could be a workout class. Marvel, oh, boom. Marvel, uh, Marvel hit training. That's it. <laughs> Avengers hit training. You could have a strength training day, which would be uh, the Thor day. You could have the stretching and uh, flexibility, which would be the Black Widow day. You could have rock climbing, the Spider Man day. You could have, oh, a strength. The next strength training day is, is Hulk all the way. Bro, you might be on something instead of CrossFit, like super fit. <laughs> Can you imagine if, if Marvel Studios went around the country and franchised their own branded fitness clubs? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I think we own this something. <laughs> Disney, hire us. We're <laughs> Would you would you want to work at a place and, and rest in peace to uh, the late great Johnny Lightfoot? Uh, Johnny once told me he said, "You know, I don't want to work. Yeah, I I don't want to work anywhere that I enjoy. Uh, and, and like if I enjoy something a lot, I don't like working there because it will take some of the fun out of it for me. Like we talked about uh, one of the last audio casts I think we did. He talked about uh, uh, going to um, to Galaxy's Edge." And I said, would you have ever wanted to work at Galaxy's Edge or uh, the Alamo Draft House, place like that? And he said, you know, I enjoy if I enjoy a place too much, I don't want to work there because I don't want it to take uh, it takes some of the fun out of it for me. Oh, I mean, yeah. Man. Would you agree? Just with that? like the yeah, man, like the teeniest, tiniest toehold I've had in like the music business. Like when you get to see like all the inside ugly parts and uh I mean, yeah. to still have those moments where you go on stage and just kind of everything goes away. Uh, but, man, there's a lot of bullshit to put up with. You know, mm. a lot of, uh, I don't know. I, I completely agree. You know, it's just like when you get on the inside of stuff, you see like the ugly side, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe that kind of ruin it, would ruin it a little bit. And so you definitely want to work someplace you enjoy the job and you have fun. but. Maybe not like working. So I don't know. That's the, so. Would we want to work at Disney? <laughs> we we enjoy the hell out of some Disney content. That's for sure. Man, I thought about going to Galaxy's Edge and just like moving into Batu. Like 
I'm just going to show up. I'm not going to leave. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's right. And you know, actually now <laughs> we have uh, the Avengers or the Marvel campus or Avengers campus. Uh, in addition to Galaxy's Edge, it's Star Wars um, for Star Wars. And actually now they have the new Loki look at Galaxy's Edge. I mean, at, not oh, Galaxy's Edge, at the Avengers uh, campus. Sorry, at the Avengers yeah. campus. They've already adapted the new Loki look, which is a little bit more, a little bit less uh asgar as <laughs> a little more oh, members only <laughs> one more, yeah, one more. and by the way is he is he gonna um finally uh, is he gonna finally get out of that the shirt and tie um <laughs> like for next week's showdown uh, we watched that trailer before the show was he out yeah. his, is he in his normal loki I, I, I don't recall. Like, I'll be happy seeing back in, in something more, a little more Loki ish than a variant uniform. Yeah, you don't want him to go into battle uh, with whoever they're going to go into battle with next week in, his, in Eddie Bauer. I mean, that's just. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. It's a great look. Uh, but, you know, it's just, I don't know if it's going to work for the, for the final battle. You want him back in his cape. Right, right now he looks like a middle manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Loki asks me about TPS reports, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, that's, that's it. Yeah, it's like then it becomes a mashup between the MCU and Office Space. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, soon we're making Michael Bolton jokes, and the rest is, you know. <laughs> Then we really have crossed into a different multiverse. We've crossed into the multiverse where Loki is in office space. <laughs> office space Loki, which we didn't get to meet yet. But I'm sure he was somewhere in the uh in the barren wasteland that they were this this week on the on the fifth episode. Let's get we're at, and that's by the way, that's what we're gonna be talking about on this Thunder Pop Extra. I'm Stephen Presley, sitting next to me in the virtual Thunder Pop Dome in the Jazz Cave. The one and only Jazz, Jazz One. one. Jazz <laughs> One. Oh yeah. Ready to go. We're buckled in. We're ready to react to episode five of Loki and to give our theories on episode six of Loki. We may do a little uh, dip our toes a little bit into Black Widow as well, since it's all part of the Marvel family, and we're pretty excited to finally have Marvel movies back as well. Uh, we'll get into all those things, and a bag of chips, and maybe an alligator Loki. Bro, and, alligators good eating. Yeah, alligators. How about alligator Lokis? Man, I would eat an alligator Loki, man. It's like, you know. Like when I eat alligator, I feel like I'm on top of the food chain. Like cows, pigs, chickens, all easy to kill, right? Yeah. Like when you eat an alligator, man, you're eating something that could eat you. You know, it's like back home we cook some gator. <laughs> it's 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 uh it's pretty special. All right, everyone. Right after this, we're gonna get into it. See you soon. Hey, I lied. Yeah, yeah. We're so happy to be here <laughs> for this Thunder Pop Extra. Talk nerdy to me, freaks. And we already have some people coming in. And uh, my friend Billy from LA said classics. Oh that's, yeah. In Billy's language, that's a that's a compliment. And we have also Jazzy from our Facebook <laughs> friend. <laughs> and uh, we also have Steven 
Better than Elvis Presley. Oh, Ben. <laughs> also, Facebook user said, Facebook's giving us some love tonight. My son is not a Marvel Star Wars nerd like you two. <laughs> but, well, you know what? That's I mean, we, we feel for him. We really do. We feel for, for that, for him, for not having that in his, that joy in his life. Right, Jazz? Man, there's so much to enjoy right now. Like, it's a good time to be alive. There's a lot of good stuff. I'm sure whatever he's into, whether it's rollerblading or um, whatever, uh, Halo. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. He has played some Halo, right? Oh, uh, no. Really? I yeah, you see, I like... don't like games where I shoot people. Okay. Because, like, the first time I shoot somebody, I feel kind of guilty. Like, I'm playing Grand Theft yeah. Auto, and I'm like, they may have had a family. Like, I'm sure they got, like, kids at home, parents, like a whole community that's going to miss this person that I just killed just because he's in a video game. I don't care if he's, like, an NPC. Somebody, everybody, somebody, someone. Well, what if it's, like, Tron or something, and that, that, that video game world is as real as our world, but just different kind of real? That's profound, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> but just in case. But, but jazz, but jazz, we know a lover, not a fighter. So that and I play football. <laughs> football is where he'll he will like so let's you know football is where we can we can get we can get hardcore. And that's where jazz is like okay, we'll we'll bust some heads when it comes to football. When a football is involved in a green grass. Then we could talk about busting some heads. See, so you're yeah. not killing nobody. Yeah, you're like you may go home a little sore. You no, know, oh, you yeah. may go home with a bloody nose, a few less teeth, but you're going home. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> yeah. You may go home with your head held down if you're a Cowboys fan like myself. But, uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. He watched you guys for a minute, and he thinks you're pretty cool. Oh man. That was the 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 half the second half of that comment uh, that he said my son is not a Marvel Star Wars nerd like you two but he just watched you guys for a minute and he thinks you're pretty cool so there thank you so much to appreciate your son. that <laughs> I, I, thank you for thank him for watching and uh, tell tell us what he is into maybe we can do a show on it if it fits into our our uh, demo because we do other stuff other than Marvel Star Wars even though we do Marvel and Star Wars. <laughs> That's my oh, wheelhouse, though. <laughs> yeah, probably about 80% of the time we do Star World, 99, 98% of the time we do Marvel and Star Wars. But no, we do, we'll do other stuff. I had a Mortal Kombat show a while back. We did, King, I, me and Jazz did King Kong, King Kong versus Godzilla. And uh, I hope to do Suicide Squad, tackle DC later in, oh, the yeah. summer, later in the summer. The new Suicide Squad with James Gunn is coming out. And that, by the way, James Gunn of Galaxy uh, Guardians of the Galaxy does his take on on the suicide squad it's gonna be coming out in early august okay now let's get into a little loki talk and i'm pretty excited to talk about loki of course this show to me has been amazing because what they did with this show is they created their own aesthetic that separated it from the other marvel shows it's still a part of that mcu the marvel cinematic universe but it has its own aesthetic one division was able to do the same thing Create its own aesthetic to where it was its, its it was it was its own show. Uh, we compared it a little bit to Twilight Zone, Black Mirror, Truman Show, One Division had a little Man, bit. Man, it's it's Doctor Who with superpowers. Yeah, yeah, it's got uh, the Falcon Winter Soldier was very much like a more traditional Marvel movie in a limited series. It felt like this. It felt like really like Captain America Four. Uh, if there had been, if it had already been happened, if it had already happened, that could have been Captain America four, or that could have been oh, for the, real. Yeah. The Falcon winter soldier movie could have been a, just a standalone movie with all those episodes consolidated. Now we get to Loki again. This could have been a Loki movie, its own thing, but it has its own aesthetic and it's very much like what they've done with the movies. Iron Man always had its own aesthetic, heavy on eighties, hard rock music. Oh Yeah. John Favreau, Robert, De Robert Downey Jr.'s funny one-liners, uh, uh, lots of Tony Stark, glamorous life, uh, nice cars, beautiful women, 
Uh, it had its own aesthetic. Captain America, the, those movies have always been kind of patriotic, a lot of army, uh, a little bit of history. Then as it got into the modern times and covering Captain America in the modern times, it was different. It was covering kind of more espionage and spy and political um, political um, uh, battle back and forth. Oh, uh, yeah. So love that about this show. It has its own vibe. Been enjoying that. Uh, Tom Hiddleston, of course, has been hitting it out of the park. This whole cast has just been just unbelievable performance performances from top down of this cast. Um, so what are your immediate thoughts after watching it Wednesday uh, for episode five? Jazz? I can't wait till next Wednesday. <laughs> I'm like, how are y'all leaving me hanging like that? You know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, a friend of mine, uh, I think it was on social media. He, he was uh, ranking the three uh, Marvel series we've got on Disney Plus so far. Yeah. I'm like, you can't really compare them. Like, they are so different, you know? I mean, just tone, vibe, you know? And they're like way deeper than you expect. You know, it's just like WandaVision kind of being this whole meditational morning. You know, uh, you know, then it's just like, you know, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. I mean, it's like, it really kind of, you know, like if you're aware of history, you know, if you know your history, like it really kind of did uh, some American history and within superpowers, you know, I mean, it just uh, the whole, you know, if you like know about the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, you'll get what they were doing with the uh, super serum, you know, before, you know, Captain America got it. Yeah. And uh, then it's just like this one, man, it, this one's been kind of, you know, kind of deep in like philosoph philosophical also, man, yeah. just, you know, I think it was even voiced in one of the earlier episodes. You're like, you know, the good guy's not always good. The bad guy's not always bad. You know, there's, there's definitely some shades of gray, you know? Yeah. And I just think it's been amazing. They've taken a character like Loki and explored this far and have made something like this interesting. Someone said some, some, well, I know a lot, a lot of people really were thrilled to see more of the gray area coming into storytelling in recent years uh, with star Wars. You've seen more of the, with the characters in, in the Mando verse with Mandalorian and, um, you know, other characters in that that story uh, having shown more of a gray area. Boba Fett, even we saw Boba Fett's kind of working in that gray area in this past season of The Mandalorian. The Marvel uh, uh, Cinematic Universe has done a ter tremendous job of showing dark versions of characters like Tony Stark. And also, I mean, Tony Stark was a weapon manufacturer high-end oh, yeah. weapon manufacturer and that's been seen speaking speaking of the next marvel series uh that's coming up uh, the uh, the what if series it's going to be in, uh, debuting in august uh in that trailer it opens with tony stark and he was uh he's talking about you know building how if there's peace he's out of work because you know he does the peace signs like well if there's peace i'm out of work because i make weapons for wars and then we see that missile hit the um the ground close to him it says what Stark Enterprises across the side of the missile. So that's a guy that people protest against in in the real world. Like weapons, people that make money off of wars. Oh, yeah. You know, there's people that don't like those people in the real world. But then in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Tony Stark saves the world. He saves the universe. Spoiler alert. But so we see the evolution of that character, the arc of that character. But we also saw the dark side. We love that. I had someone make the statement to me the other day. I don't remember who it was that, hey, I love this gray area stuff is great, but I would I want to see a, just a, a person that's just pure evil in something like when are we going to see that again? Do you miss that? Do you want to see a pure evil motherfucker? Yeah, <laughs> something that just has no gray area at all. They're just they're just bad. I don't know, man. It's like. Who was the last person we saw? Was it would it be Palpatine the, in the Star Joker? Wars? Joker. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah, it didn't have much gray. But area. even then, uh, you know, what was it? The last one of the Joker movie. 
they really yeah. kind of fleshed that out. I mean, I don't know how much canon right. that is, but right. that was really uh, fleshed out, you know? Right. Like how you know, he got, like how he, he evolved to being that person. Cause that's what a lot of this, a lot of these origin stories do with villains. I just watched, by the way, I just watched Cruella. Cruella is a perfect example. Cruella is the prequel series to the one and one Dalmatians. And it does for yeah. Cruella what the prequels and star Wars does for Darth Vader and shows us how this young woman becomes the evil Cruella that we saw in one and one Dalmatians. And they do a very good job of getting us from point A to point B and kind of showing us and seeing how she gets to that point. Um, and there's always backstory of things that they find out about themselves as they're going through it and stuff. So I don't know. I think maybe Palpatine Palpatine is just evil, right? Something happened to that guy. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure. Probably in our lifetimes, we'll get the the Palpatine live action prequel. That shows oh, yeah. us how he got to be Palpatine from like a young, <laughs> aspiring, you know, politician. Young Palpy. <laughs> young Palpy. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. I just hope there's not a pod race scene in that. I don't need to see young Palpatine in a pod race. We've done that already. <laughs> Not that I minded the pod race scene. I didn't mind the pod race scene as much as other people did. That was one of the complaints some people had about the first, uh, the three prequels was the pod race. I liked the pod race. <laughs> it was the highlight of that. Like, I literally went from it of being a prequel hater to having an appreciation for him. You know, when you just realize, you know, they weren't the messianic samurai space westerns that we thought they were going to be. Right. They were different. Yeah, they were different. It was a different story um, set in the same universe, but it was a different time period and a different story. So anyway, anyway with this uh, this episode, we saw the Lokis. We finally saw the Loked Out. <laughs> the King of Lokis. And there were Lokis aplenty. They've already got, uh, by the way, Loki toys. And uh, you can see some of them there. The bobbleheads are out. Oh, the Funko Pops, rather, not the bobbleheads, but the Funko Pops. And uh they're out. And uh there's there's uh you can get actually a Funko Pop of all the Lokis that was in this week's episode. Uh there's a there's there's a version of all of them. And here's a question for you. Did you know when you were watching you were excited when you were watching Falcon Winter Soldier and, and you find out about Anthony Mackey, who is from Louisiana in real life, they decided to make Sam Wilson also oh from yeah your, from your home oh. state. Oh yeah. You know, like, I'm, I'm fully on board with that. Like he is my captain America. <laughs> but, but now we're back into, we're into another MCU series and you found that yet another cast member that's from Louisiana. <laughs> is featured yeah. in a Marvel cinematic series playing one of the Lokis. Now, not only you could do a whole multiverse like series with just Louisiana Avengers. You could, be, <laughs> you could get this one here. You could get yeah, this some people were saying that it's a croc crocodile. I'm like, no, that's a gator. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, crocs have like sharper, you know, yeah. Gators have more rounded. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He was, they had a casting call, a swamp swamp somewhere. <laughs> and they, it was, oh. It was who looked the best in the the headpiece. Yeah. <laughs> well, who was uh who was the uh co-star of uh Captain Marvel? Like some Rambo. Yeah, spoke, uh, like, Monica yeah. Monica Rambo. Yeah, Monica Rambo. Yeah, and she was in uh WandaVision too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, she got back home connections. Okay, so she's she's she grew up in or she's from Louisiana or Yeah, Louisiana. yeah, in the movie they yeah, they, they went down the bayou. Well, you're three for three, man. You have Monica Rambo <laughs> from, from Louisiana, and then Anthony Mackey uh, from the Falcon Winter Soldier, the new Captain America, Louisiana, and now Crocodile. Logan. Man, you know, I was saying earlier, a friend of mine was trying to compare uh, the three series we've had so far, and uh, I only edge out uh, Falcon Winter Soldier only because LSU got mentioned in the second episode. Because that means LSU is canon in the MCU. True, true. Yeah, that's that's a that's a valid point. 
Like um, it wasn't like some made up name. It wasn't some made up, you know, university. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a shout out to LSU. So I'm like, okay. So if there's a next time Alabama plays LSU, one of your big rivals and hated hated um, arch nemesis, they have Forrest Gump on the Alabama side. <laughs> this is Captain America. Captain America, boom. <laughs> If I get to go to that game, that's my sign right there. <laughs> and it is the shield versus the feet, because the feet, the speed is on Forrest Gump's side. He's got the he's got the speed. <laughs> yeah. here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing with that. Uh funny thing about Forrest Gump, and we all know, of course, you know what we're talking about, is that Forrest Gump plays a, goes to play running back for the Alabama yeah. uh, Crimson Tide in that movie. And it will, and you know, they wrote a second, they wrote a second movie, but they didn't, they didn't make the movie. They just wrote it as a book. He plays for the New Orleans Saints. Oh yeah. In the, in the <laughs> so if they had ever made that Forrest Gump and company or the second movie, he, they, he would have been a, in the Saints um, in that movie. Cause he goes to New York, he goes to Louisiana to see his old friend, Bubba Gump from Bubba Gump shrimp. But here's the thing. Uh, also, a lot of people may not know this, but one of the coaches for Alabama in that, or the, the coach, the head coach for Alabama in that movie is Enos from the Dukes of Hazard. You look at, I, I didn't notice, notice it either because he looks so different. If you go back and watch it, you can watch it on YouTube and you watch it real close and you hear the voice and you start to look at it. It's like, oh gosh, that is Deputy Enos. Oh, I thought Bear Bryant. I mean, he was playing Bear, Bear Bryant. Yeah, he probably was playing Bear Bryant. He was probably playing Bear Bryant. But yeah, that's, that's actual Enos from the Dukes of Hazard in that movie. So would have been probably several years separated from the time he had been in the Dukes of Hazard, So he had been a lot older by that time to play, to play Bear Bryant. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It was that, it was another interesting uh, fun fact. Fun fact, as they say. Um, so yeah, Loki, we got, we got uh, another Louisiana, uh, Louisiana in, uh, in the Loki. Uh, we also got classic Loki. Cause the, cause the, you know, the older Loki, is oh, dressed yeah. and inspired by the old classic Loki from the comic books. It's a nod to that. So oh yeah. That. And of course we know he gets to be the big hero at the end. Um, it surprises everyone is kind of the big hero at the end of the uh, end of episode five of that. Um, would you like to see any of those Lokis come back? Do you think that we will see any of those Lokis back when we get into like the multiverse of madness with Dr. Strange, maybe the kid Loki? would be a possibility. I know Sylvie's coming back after this show. I'm sure she's become such a huge uh, <laughs> star, star on social media. I'm sure she. we're going to see Sylvie again after this show's over. I think, right? Man, seeing a little electricity between Loki and Sylvie, I'm like, you know, like I said, um, WandaVision was kind of this whole thing about mourning, yeah. you know, then it was like Cap- Captain America, Winter Soldier, you know, all that it was kind of about, you know, race in this country and kind of, a, you know, a real look at that. Is Loki just really going to be about loving yourself? You know, yeah. because he's got a vibe with Sylvie. <laughs> like, that's like, that's like Loki, might, Loki might be a narcissexual. Yes. <laughs> we've all this talk about there's all this talk about him coming out as, as being bi during the the uh, series during the season but i think he's definitely a what, what how'd you t- 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 narcissexual t- narcissexual <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever hear the theory and i don't know if there's any truth to this because i'm not a love expert like psychologist i'm not a psychologist maybe i'm a love expert a love expert no but a psychologist, I'm not. And I'll tell you this. There's these people that say that people, you know, those people that date people that look just like them. And they look, they look a lot they look like brother and sister, they look like twins. And they say, all oh, those people are the people that are like, uh, love themselves. Like they, they're in love with themselves. So they date somebody that looks like them. When they see someone that looks like them, they fall in love. And so that dynamic seems like that's what's happened in this show. Do you think that's true? People that date their identical like version of themselves is kind of a narcissistic thing, or is it just like they don't even know what they're doing? It's just familiarity. They're like they know it makes them feel comfortable and warm and comfortable because they're used to seeing that face. See, I don't know, man, because I have a doppelganger running around Austin, and I've had like 
about you 18, do? yes, there's like about 18 different friends have seen other me and like I've had strangers, you know, are they an LSU th- fan? No, but there are so many things that line up that, you know, like we're similar type people and, uh, you You've know, never like, met uh, him. You've never met him. No, I've had one friend suggest that it might be a fight club situation, which other me might be me. And I don't know if I'm the Tyler Durden or he's the Tyler Durden. But yeah. one day I was leaving my apartment to uh, go over to Harvest, Natural Harvest over yeah, on yeah. Guad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And at the corner of 39th and Guad, mm-hmm. I see me standing on the corner. Oh, no. Like, I saw a guy who looked just like me. He had his you hat tilted like me. He had my beard, dark eyes, thick like me held his book pack dressed like me and i am like looking at this guy and like i'm want to say something but i'm like holy shit what if like back to the future rules or right like i don't want to you know ruin space time like that's how much he looked like me but uh i've never really found myself attracted to guys but like when i saw other me i'm like god dig him though but yeah, I might be a narcissexual too. <laughs> you know, maybe most of us are. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's always those. Then there's people that say they have mom or dad issues, and they date someone that reminds them of their mom or dad. But I don't know. This is a whole thing you could go on about for a long time, kind of speculating what maybe there's different versions of it. Like there's like different categories of like what makes a person fall in love. And maybe it's like one, someone that looks like you, or if you have mommy, daddy, I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah. Like uh, other me had a purple beard for a while. Like I've had, Oh, now uh, it's getting weird. No, it, like, no, I keep getting clues and it's just like, is it me? <laughs> yeah. It's one of these days I'm going to run into him and uh, I won't get the photo. Everything else weird. in the world, you can just Google, right? But you yeah. can't say, look for somebody that looks like this. But uh, I know he's out there. I found a couple people who I figured they have confused me because uh, there was big bald Mike who was a uh, uh, power lifter. And I was like, nope, that's not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know he's out there. I'm going to find him one day. We're going to, we're going to need to, uh, what if I tracked him down? And surprised you with him on the show, man. Like seriously, if I ever find my doppelganger, like I want the photo, and I'm just gonna write an article and like sell it to like, you know, Mashable, well, you know, something to you know, publish this because it it's been a story I've been, you know, I have a list of like clues I've gotten over the years, you know. I'm like, you were close though. You were like, like, what happened? (laughs) Did you try to go over and did you try to get over there and you couldn't get over there before they were like, they bolted or what? Did they see you? I don't know. Um, Okay. I was a little stupid at the time. uh, (laughs) And I was like, if I talk to other me, I might rip space time, like back to the future. There's, rules. there's that, there's that issue. And we're, we're going to probably see that. You're going to see that firsthand. As the, as the, <laughs> possibly next week in episode six. Um, that's a great segue into episode six, because we know now after episode five, we're leading into episode six and they're about to go confront the source that has been, devising this whole TVA thing all along. And um, it's, it's about the shit's about to hit the fan. Oh uh, yeah. Ne- next week. Now the two trailers came out to this week, the last 24 hours, the latest trailer dropped. And that's the one that revealed. Okay. Yeah. Which was discussed and been discussed since this show started at the beginning of the season. Now we see footage of it. Are you surprised that they're they're showing that they're giving that out and it's not going to be they're not going to surprise us with it? I mean, I'm a little I'm a little skeptical and thinking that it's a court it's a uh, um, a red herring. Yeah, that they're trying to the uh, a direct uh, trying to take us off. Yeah, misdirect. They're trying to take yeah. us off the path because why? Well, I don't. They would never. The MCU would never give that away. A week out, the surprise. 
There must be something else. If it is, it's something bigger, you know. Like I know that uh, Kang has been cast, and he's going to be um, an Ant Man, like the new Ant Man sequel. Oh, it's not unlikely that it would. So, what about this possibility? Because a lot of now, there's I read an article today uh, with speculation that it was going to be evil Loki, and evil wait, wait, Loki... which evil Loki? Well, yeah, it's true. Well, the Loki. <laughs> I mean, Loki's now are good guys, and because Sylvie, we've seen her, you know, kind and and, and sensitive side. We've seen Loki, Loki, we've seen his kind and sensitive side. He gave what's his name a hug, a goodbye. <laughs> his new oh, yeah. his bro, his bromance for this season, uh, gave him a nice little hug, goodbye, and we saw him leave, and he headed off to go burn the TVA down, Mobius. Oh, yeah. Seriously, the least Owen Wilson character I've ever seen Owen Wilson play. It was. It was the least Owen Wilson character. Uh, now, this is on Inverse. Inverse said after episode five, saw Loki face a dozen different versions of himself in the void and team up with a couple of them to take down Alias. You'd think we would already have dealt with our fair share of Lokis. As Mobius quips, you throw a rock out here, you hit a Loki which is one of the best lines of the, of the of the week. However, Loki episode five could be setting up a finale showdown we expected at the beginning of the series, but lost sight of over the course of the show. Loki versus evil Loki. Uh, or evil Loki versus less evil Loki. <laughs> the, the first couple of... The first couple of episodes set up Loki to go face-to-face -face with his evil variant. The series then subverted expectations by introducing Sylvie, who ends up not being a villain at all. She reveals the truth about the TVA and becomes one of the good guys. In fact, she brought out some real humility from the most relentless trickster in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So what, what happens, and this is where the theory comes in, uh, Loki Episode 6 will most definitely reveal who really is behind the TVA. And while Easter eggs point towards other major villains, like Kang, and of course now it's in an actual trailer, we see a Kang, it's possible the finale will reveal the big bad to be another Loki variant, an evil Loki. Now this is a theory that makes it sound fathomable. Uh, this this uh, TikToker refers to this Loki, this is from 3C Films. They explained how a shot of Loki sitting in a gold throne from a recent teaser trailer has yet to appear on the show. Yeah, kind of King Loki, like as Guardian King Loki. Yeah, yeah, like that's the, probably like one of the only shots out of any of their trailers and promo material that you haven't seen. You exactly. Know? And the TikToker refers to this Loki as King Loki and suggests he may be evil Loki variant awaiting the show's protagonist in the castle. A Loki being king of the TVA aligns with Loki level of narcissism. <laughs> Um, we've come to expect from the character. An evil Loki would absolutely see himself as the biggest threat. So, of course, he would want the TVA to eliminate other Loki variants. So here's the, here's okay. So hear me out on this. What if the evil Loki created the fake, like like a uh, made himself to look like, um, what's his name? King is it King? King. Yeah, King. Yeah. He makes himself look like Kang in that scene, and it's just another misdirect, and it was a good thing they could show us in the trailer, but it's actually King Loki. Because King Loki, and just like Loki, makes themselves look like different things. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking maybe is happening here for episode six. Now, not to say that Kang won't appear. Now, the other possible, this is my second theory. I've got two theories. So second theory is, is that what we saw with Kang is an end credit scene that is setting up Doctor Strange, um, a little Ant bit, Man. yeah, Ant, or Ant Man and Doctor Strange, maybe Ant Man and Doctor Strange a little bit, setting up the future Marvel movies, uh, as a villain in those movies. But what we actually deal with is still King Loki. But after they finish off King Loki, we get an end credit that is King, and that's what we see, and that's what they leave us with. <laughs> I don't know. Man, I tell you, between uh, Marvel on Wednesdays and uh, Star Wars on Fridays, man, it makes my week a lot shorter. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've, they've really, uh, and we're going to continue to get it because we're going to get the What If series next month. 
And uh, that's going to be the next big Marvel series. Uh, the first MCU, MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe animated series. That's going to be kind of fun because it's going to be sort of throwing everything up at the ceiling because it's a what if series. It's sort of these, these um, hypotheticals, I guess you could say, uh, in the Marvel Universe. And not Robert Downey Jr. voice and Tony Stark as we originally thought. But it is Chadwick Boseman voicing Black Panther. And I read this week, this is the last thing he did before he passed. So it's going to be very, very emotional to see or to hear him voicing that character one more time. Oh, fans, damn. Fans, yeah. So it'd be real interesting. Before we wrap up on Thunder Pop Extra, and I want to get you, first of all, any final thoughts on Loki next week? Black Widow coming out this weekend? Uh, we Man, I, I was telling you how I was kind of on the fence about seeing Black Widow. Yeah, that fence is getting shorter. <laughs> I'm like, uh, <laughs> I I'm been uh, you know hearing some of the reviews, and I'm like, okay. But then, uh, what's it? The Delta variant of COVID. Yeah, I'm like yeah, like I'm vaxxed up, but yeah, like. Maybe I, I spend the uh, Disney Plus money. <laughs> I know. Okay, I got. I'll email you. I got something on that. I'll email you about it after the, or I'll tell you after the show on Black Widow. I got something on that for you, and that you're gonna like. Okay. Also, now, as we are on the subject of, subject of superheroes, which we don't get to talk about very much on this show, we don't get to talk superheroes that much, do we? Yeah. <laughs> My son's uh, fourth birthday, and I can't believe he's going to be four, and it really already is like he's growing up too fast for me. Uh, I, the, I'm real nostalgic about the baby years, but it is kind of fun to see him growing up and starting to like some things that, especially what, how heartwarming is it when they like some things that you like, your kids, and they're not going to like everything you like, but they're going to like some of the things. And when he gets older, by the time he's a teenager, he may be moved on to something completely different. But he asked for his first batch of like real, like what I call adult superheroes, <laughs> grown up superheroes. You know, not like Paw Patrol or the PJ Mask, which are kind of like more of that toddler. Yeah. Like, one to five year old kind of range of superheroes. He wanted some superheroes. And so uh, my wife, his mom, she comes and says, you know, Micah wants a, a, a superhero like team up like a group of superheroes. And I said, okay, which ones, you know, cause you, you automatically would ask the question yourself, wouldn't you DC Marvel, DC Marvel, which ones? And he's like, so she sends me a link on Amazon said, Oh, he says he wants these. Okay. So I'm going to show you what was sent to me and you tell me what's wrong with this picture. Okay. There's, there's a few things here that came that showed up for me. Uh, let me get, uh, let me get this, <laughs> get this here and pull this up for you. Okay. Here it is. Okay. First of all, Okay, we're gonna we'll pull down our our, uh, our split screen here, and I'll uh, be able to show you this properly. Okay, okay, here's okay. First of all, I want to show you something. Okay, we go. It was an Amazon link that sent me to superhero action figure sets of six pieces, eighteen ninety nine. What a bargain, right? Okay, oh, big. Okay, open this up, and first of all, you see the the, the superhero bundle there, and you get. All these superheroes for $18.99. The superhero team up, though, of DC and Marvel. <laughs> it's a mix up of mashup of DC and Marvel. That's fine. But okay, here's the other thing. Now, is there something odd about the detailing on these? <laughs> Do I really want to make this my son's first experience? With, with... I mean. <laughs> Too much coffee, Superman. <laughs> I mean, is that yeah, that's too much coffee, Superman? What's going on with the hair there? There's like I mean, something on the side there. Like that hair is a wild hair that kind of went all the way to like almost his, his nostril. It's like a hair that connects from his hair to his head to his nostril. And this this is like if Gary Busey played Thor in the 80s. <laughs> I mean oh. That Hulk looks, looks like a little small Hulk. <laughs> the Hulk is, is the shortest character. It's almost like the uh, Kevin Hart as Incredible Hulk. <laughs> I mean, and that's not even to mention <laughs> with Captain America. 
who looks like, I don't know. I mean, uh, this, this looks like some actor. I don't know who the actor is, but it's not Chris Evans. <laughs> but it slightly looks like maybe Toby from the office playing Captain America. <laughs> Be Toby from the office. I mean, it looks like the the uh, inquiring, curious Captain America. <laughs> it's like if they had acting classes and like Captain America, show us your inquiring, curious face, <laughs> or slightly concerned face. That would be the, the emotion that would be in that. So I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna make an executive decision, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna get this set, even though it's very amusing. <laughs> I ended up finding an Avengers set that was, I think he'll be just as happy with. It's an Avengers set. Spoiler um, alert. Yeah. He, <laughs> Hope he's not watching. I landed on something. Which ones did I end up getting? I got a really cool setup of Avengers and it has the, uh, the Thor. It has a bunch of them. I don't even know which one it's got a cool. It's got iron Spidey. The set that okay. I ended up, the set that I ended up picking out was iron has iron Spidey. It has Captain America. It has uh, um, Iron, uh, Iron Man, uh, Black Widow, and then also, um, and then Iron Spidey. Also, it's Thor, long hair Thor. Because you know, there's a short hair Thor and there's the long hair Thor. But while I was searching, I wanted, you know, I started looking at toys. And as you know, you would start looking for toys for yourself, would you not? <laughs> collectibles. <laughs> and I, yeah, exactly. Collectibles. So I go and I'm starting to look because I was like curious. I was like, because I, I, you know, my sense of humor, I was curious if you could find a dad bod Thor from, from Avengers. Is it uh, out there? From Avengers Endgame. So I was looking and looking and I wanted the one that would have been like this version, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Like game. Big Lebowski. A big Lebowski dad bod Thor. Yeah. And you could, they don't make it. They don't make one. There's only custom made ones that you can buy on eBay. And they were all selling for like 300 bucks. The oh, custom made ones. So bro. I'm like, what, what a misfire for Marvel not to have marketed that. Oh and yeah. Made, and made that character. Man. Uh, Dave Filoni has an action figure. I saw they hit like star Wars Twitter no today. Way. Yeah. Dave Filoni. So if Dave Filoni's got a, a Star Wars like action figure, yes, we want one for uh, Carson Tiva. There, there's you got to guess. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope you can get one for Carson Tiva. Now you can get this. This this is the in game Thor with his suit on, <laughs> and you can buy that one. So I may go. I may go in on that one, um, and see. And that might be, but I would like to know. I one. want a dad bod door who likes white Russians. <laughs> it's, it's uh, exactly what that would be. And Man, uh, I, I guess there was a leak earlier. Uh, some of the uh, figures from the new uh, Spider-Man movie. And there's going to be like a black and gold uh, Spider-Man. Yes. Costume. I'm like, okay, so he's a saints fan in that movie. Ah, uh. <laughs> man more representation from louisiana oh exactly the, uh... no I'm, I'm gonna find that uh black and gold uh spider-man uh mask you know like i uh i shoot a lot of you know especially for lsu stuff i shoot a lot of like canned reactions between like my mask i hit and other stuff so whatever happens in the game when i'm live tweeting i'm like okay i got a face palm or this or that so yeah kind of we'll get those for uh saints games i love it I love it. Yeah, very appropriate. Very appropriate. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's a couple of the, if you're looking for some collectibles. Uh, also, uh, it's hard to, there's so much Marvel this month. Also this, the Loki uh, Simpsons, which will be oh, on yeah. Disney Plus uh, coming up here pretty quick. Not sure what day that drops. I don't have that. No, it's, it already dropped. It's like six minutes long, but. Okay, it's already it's on. Like, oh. oh, yeah. I'm going to go watch it later. I'm going to go watch it later. Uh, another thing, this was my favorite uh, post this week. I'm going to wanted to put this up before the show. We talked about Sylvie. The actress is Sophia DiMartino. If I'm, hopefully I'm saying her name right. This was really cool. It's not easy being a working mom, mama, uh, but the, the, uh, the, the costume designer for the series 
designed her costume to where there was easy access to where she could access and breastfeed her newborn baby during breaks. Uh, oh wow! On the show, and there's this is not the photo, but there's a photo you can find. It's all over Google that has shows her demonstrating the suit, not with the infant, but it shows the suit kind of opened up where it has the openings. And a lot of people posted, including ourselves on Thunder Pop's Instagram, we posted that with the tweet on the photo to add some, um, you know, um, uh, ex explanation for the photo itself by including the tweet. But a lot of people got really upset because a lot of people were just posting the photo without the tweet to add some ex explanation. And it was just like they were just showing her picture of her opened up. And so we did get some props from people saying, I'm glad you're one of the ones that posted the photo with the tweet <laughs> to show, not just to show the, you know, the costume yeah. and have some, add some explanation what was going on there with the suit and why she had, but uh, kudos to uh, her for multitasking and also to the costume designer for thinking of thinking about that and including oh, that. Yeah. She said it's what really made it possible for her to be able to do the role. Oh, to that's job, awesome. Take, to take the job. So that's cool. Oh, boy. Well, here we are. Thunder Pop Extra next week, episode six. We'll be back in some capacity next week to react to the finale. I'm pretty excited. Episode six next Wednesday. Um, Jazz One, you, sir, have a great weekend. You too, and, bro. And I will, uh, I'll be talking to you after the show. We're going to hang out for a little bit and talk because we're <laughs> planning a project, a secret project kind of secret kind of secret but anyway everybody out there have a good day hour second millisecond good night Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.